hello welcome to my latest video you know I've started and I can't think how big this is it's oh, 20 by 16 inches that'll be on stretch canvas and it's got its nice burnt sienna and it's dry to the touch some quite nice impasto down here because it's you can see the ghost of a former landscape that I can no longer live with and painted over just uh, sort of music out I always have headphones as many as you know and listen to music while I paint yeah so uh, here yeah, I've just uh, start waving my hairy stick about and establish a quick horizon scarcely any thought Hope you're all having a nice weekend. I've been stuck at work much of the day, but uh, it uh, buys paint and canvas, so I'm not complaining. Just add some uh, titanium white into that sky. Yeah, it's uh, quite pleasing. And, uh, the burnt sienna is just a touch damp, so it's, it has kicked up some of the burnt sienna into that sky. It does kind of help, I think. I was hoping my canvas doesn't go flying off the easel. It fell off twice when I was painting it with uh, the underpainting. Let's put some anger up here as well. A bit of Payne's Grey. Oh yes. Working very quick as usual. Yeah, put some uh, ultramarine blue up here I think. Just to see what would happen. I might do some on the top left hand corner as well. But, uh, yeah, I'll have a think. Yeah, just add some uh, more titanium white just to churn things up a bit. Looks like a mess, but uh, it'll soon start to make sense. Love working fast. Love watching the colours blend as you work. A bit more anger. Using my trusty flat brush, just going to load my uh, palette with a bit more titanium white. Yeah, it kind of works that uh, bit of brown in the sky there. I might just add a bit more titanium white, just that touch. Oops, it's knocked into my bloody camera then. It's only about an inch away from my shoulder, the tripod. I do tend to knock into it sometimes. And I'm waving my arm about. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was talking yesterday about uh, a violinist. And I'd have loved to have um, learnt violin or something like that. I did um, try and learn cornet when I was at school. But uh, it's a daft idea. I got bullied for carrying it and kept leaving it on the bus every time. My dad had to go over to uh, Hullies of Baslow in Derbyshire to go and pick it up. Yeah, it's forever leaving it lying around. And yeah, I'd, you know, only went to a few lessons. But uh, now, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to learn something like that. A smart violin, I'd, I'd love to. I think I'd be able to apply myself more at my age than what I used to be able to do. Yeah, I don't think my wife would appreciate it when me screeching around a violin. The cello's another one, I'd love to play cello. Yeah, there's some, uh, you know, on YouTube, there's some amazing uh, musicians, you know, who aren't 10 years old. You know, concert pianists and people like that. It's just incredible. Just make sure my camera's in focus. <coughs> yeah, there's a 14-year-old violinist called Pablo somebody or other. And it is just astonishing. Let's look him up, uh, violinist. Put in Pablo. Should come up. Yeah, Pablo de Sarasate. A proper musician's name. Proper, it's a name I'd love. I'd love a name like that for my art, my painting. Yeah, it's just uh, incredible. Oh, no, I beg your pardon. No, he isn't. No, I'm thinking of somebody else. He, he God, he was born in 1844. Which will make him 190-odd uh, years old. Yeah, wrong person. Well, anyway, Pablo somebody or other. It really is incredible. No, it could be somebody completely different, but never mind. I'm just rambling on. So, what? Oh, I think eight, min eight minutes in and we've got a painting already. Just putting a bit more light in. Oh, what was that violinist name? But yeah, well, we're a young lad. And it, it's his music I tend to listen to when I paint. What was his flipping name? Never mind. Oh, I've got it. It's written on me. iPod. Yeah, it's not bad, that blue in the sky. I can live with that, just about. Yeah, 
Yeah, my, you know, only did cornet, and my brother he did uh, piano and um, clarinet. He played. We tended to have a creative streak in the family. My dad was a painter. My mum was a ceramicist and painter. And she can sing as well. <coughs> and my granddad, he, he was uh, an exceptional tenor and pianist. He was in um, Liverpool Philharmonic Choir. I have great memories of uh, going to the Philharmonic Hall with Phil in Liverpool having uh, VIP treatment. We'd all be dressed dressed up, you know, we, me and my brother had bow ties on, all the rest of it. And we were going from a very early age. And uh, we we always had a secret signal, you know, the, the orchestra, a massive, you know, full orchestra in the, the big choir, they weren't allowed to wave at people in the audience, but my granddad always had a signal, pre-arranged signal with us. And when he saw us, he used to just, with his right hand, just play with his earlobe. And uh, th this developed, you know, early 80s, ju just playing with his earlobe. And then, you know, we'd do it back to say we have acknowledged it. You know, this is in the middle of, you know, the concert or whatever. And this developed over the years. It, it kept, became more and more elaborate. And yeah, it stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and one, one year, um, he tweaked his right earlobe with his left hand. So he <laughs> meant him putting his uh, hand right over his head and uh, giving his ear a wiggle. <laughs> Much to our delight. But yeah, it was incredible. It was, you know, there's some met some amazing people. You know, the newsreader, Dickie Baker, we met him a few times. My granddad was good friends with him. And um, famous, uh, this is one of the struggling names again. The famous um, percussionist who's deaf. She was a celeb, she, well, she still is. She was on Blue Peter and all sorts of stuff. Met her a few times. Yeah, she used to play the xylophone, you know. And normally, you play the xylophone with two sticks. I don't know the name of them. And you just tap away. She used to use four at the same time. And just uh, amazing. She was, you know, profoundly, she was very deaf. But she used to feel the vibrations of her feet. And, oh yes, that's Evelyn Glenny is her name. OBE, I might add. Or DBE, something like that. Yeah, she's uh, very well known. She's multi award winning. But yeah, she was friends with my granddad. We played together. It was uh, one time, it was, it was a very busy time. He lived over in West Kirby and used to travel to Liverpool and back constantly. And there was one time um, <coughs> when Paul McCartney wrote Liverpool Auditorio. And the Liverpool Philharmonic Choir were doing it. And they were all there. You know, Paul McCartney was there. And Carl Davis, the famous conductor, he conducted it. There was um, world-renowned soprano, Kirita Canara, she was there. Um, Willard White, another famous um, tenor or bass or baritone, whatever he is. Yeah.
But yeah, we we used to uh, yeah when we were growing up in the eighties when we were kids, fantastic memories of uh, going to the bar. You know, before and after the show, and meeting everybody, and obviously we'd have lemonade or coke or whatever. And uh, yeah, we felt like celebrities. We were treated like VIPs, or we felt like VIPs. I've still got the score somewhere knocking about for Liverpool. Vi- um, beg your pardon, put my teeth in for Liverpool Oratorio that my granddad gave me. Yeah, great times there. <laughs> yeah, it's getting nervous after 16 or 17 minutes of banging on. Coming on nicely. If only, if only my granddad could see me now, what I'm doing now. Hope he'd be proud. Oh, you know, me bloody camera packed in as I was painting away and I've had to restart it. So there was a slight jump. I do beg your pardon, but I'll carry on. Carry on going. Just churning that sky up. Entertaining white. Yeah, it does help that brown on the bottom right hand of the sky. I'll keep that a bit more. Anger in the sky. Yeah, I mean, particularly during, um, I mean, every year it was, my granddad was on the radio, it was recorded live. And if we couldn't make it to the um, to a particular concert or anything, we used to listen to it on the radio as a family, which was nice. And you know, Liverpool Auditorium was on telly, that was televised in the early 90s. Mm. Yeah, it's not to meet Paul McCartney one day and get him to sign my score and uh, have a chat about my granddad. I believe my granddad's got a plaque in um, Liverpool Philharmonic Hall. Need to go back one day and see a show, see a concert. Coming on nicely. I think we're almost there with it. I can feel it nearly there. Yeah, it does work quite nicely, that um, brown background. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to be doing underpainting now. Forever, I think. I mean, the, the other added bonus, which I didn't realise about doing an underpainting first, is that when you're painting the landscape, you don't lose some of the paint through the canvas. Because often if you turn a canvas over, you see a reverse of the landscape on the other side where it's just soaked through. Doing an underpainting prevents it, but you don't lose any of the pigment through the canvas. So it uh, yeah, seems to work really well. few more lines and things with my rake. Yeah, I think that looks just about dandy. The job is nearly a good one. It's not perfect, but I enjoyed it. It'll do for me. And uh, as long as you enjoy it, that's the important thing. Doesn't matter what other people think. A few last details. Got that instinctive feeling that it's just about finished. Could be uh, houses there, or trees, could be whatever you want. He scratches my paint tube. Yeah, I think that looks just about dandy. Right, John, leave it alone. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Without a doubt. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.